Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at z-scores and comparing distributions. So I briefly touched up on z-scores at the end of my last video, and uh, with the z-scores we actually looked at our standard deviation and our mean in order to calculate the position of uh, where a value lies. So we know that if a uh, if a value on the distribution lies to one standard deviation to the right of the mean, then it obviously has a z-score of 1. It is essentially a measure of how many standard deviations uh, point is away from the mean, in either the negative or the positive direction. And you may remember I gave this formula, x e uh, z equals x take mu over sigma. Well, today we're going to be looking at how we can use this to compare values on different distributions. Because, uh, let's say as a population, or for example, you've done a test and you want to know how well you've done on the test compared to everyone else, um, and maybe you want to compare it to another test because there were a different set of marks on another test, well, you'd get an idea of how well you did compared to everyone else by looking at the z-score, because it tells you whether you're close to the average for that test, or whether you were doing quite well or quite poorly. So z-scores can be quite handy for comparing different things and are trying to provide a scale there. So that's what we'll be looking at today. I've got three questions prepared, so uh, we'll just go ahead and start this. Well, uh, the first question says, a manufacturer who produces cans of soup discover that the contents of any given can of soup is normally distributed with a mean of 504 grams and a standard deviation of 1.5 grams. So I'll just write up the key features here. We have a mean of 504 grams and we have a standard deviation of 1.5 grams. And it says if the can of soup is less than 500 grams, it will be rejected. And then it gives us a list of things to calculate. So we know that the can of soup must be greater than 500 grams, else it is rejected. Okay, so obviously you probably know cans of soup, if you were to weigh them all, they wouldn't be exactly the same sort of mass, because of course if you had things like chunky carrots or ravioli in your soup, for example, then it'd be hard to get the can of soup to weigh the exact same amount of weight each time. In fact, it would probably be nearly impossible. Uh, so what we do in factories is we generally omit samples that are too low or too high. Uh, in this case, we're just looking at samples that are too low, so less than 500 grams. So for example, a manufacturer may claim 500 grams net or something like that. It's okay if it's more, but if it's less, then they've got a problem there. Okay, so in order to do this, the first part is to shade the region of cans that will be rejected on a scaled normal distribution that has z-scores on the x-axis with gram weights. So I've got my z-scores here, I've got my uh, mu take sigma, uh, mu take the standard deviations or mu plus the standard deviations, depending on whether we're looking to the right or the left. But now what we need to do is we need to work out, okay, um, where does the 500 gram actually fit, what is its z-score, and from that we need to actually have the weights across there. So I reckon it's probably easiest to put the weights across there first, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So in order to do this, we know that the mean is uh, 504 grams, and we know that uh, standard deviation is 1.5 grams, so if we add one standard deviation, we're looking at 505 0.5 grams, and then if we add another 1.5, we're looking at 507, and then we're looking at 508.5. Okay, and if we go back the other way, well, 504, and we take 1.5 from that, we're obviously going to get 102.5, and if we take 1.5 from that, we're obviously going to get 501, and if we take 1.5 from that again, then of course we're going to get 499.5. Okay, so now we need to calculate the z-score for the can of soups that are less than 500 grams, because we need to be able to shade the region of the cans that will be rejected. Okay, so we've got our z-score formula up here, so it's x take mu. So on my uh, trusty TI-84 calculator, 
I'm going to go alpha y equals and scroll down to 2 to get a fraction bar. And then I'm going to do x take mu. So in this case, 500 take 504. Because x is the value we want, because if it's less than that, it's going to be rejected. And uh, mu is obviously 504, because that was given in the question as the mean. And then that's over sigma. And sigma is the standard deviation, which in this case is 1.5. So this actually tells us now that uh, the z-score is negative 2.67, which is negative 2 and 2 thirds. So we can shade this on our set of axes by looking where negative uh, such a value is. So there's negative 2 and there's negative 3. So negative 2.67 is probably going to be somewhere around about there. And this proportion here will be rejected. Okay, so we've got the z-score for that. And our next question asks us... Write the range of z-scores applicable to cans that are not rejected. So in order for a can to not be rejected, then its z-score must be greater than negative two and two-thirds for it to be not rejected. So it must be greater than that value in there, which is 500 grams. But if it is rejected, then of course the z-score is going to be less than negative two and two-thirds. And if we're looking at this in a bit more detail, there may be another end of the spectrum. Maybe things have a z-score greater than two and two-thirds may actually be rejected as well, in which case we would write this as a range where we'd have negative two and two-thirds, z and two and two-thirds. But in this case, we're only rejecting the ones that are small. Uh, the ones that have less than the weight claimed on the can. Okay, so we've answered that question. So moving on to the next one. It says, uh, again, specify the z-scores are good for sale. I kind of jumped ahead and uh, did that first and then did the rejected one. But that's okay. Um, so the next question says, another manufacturer makes tins of fresh tuna. So we've got cans of soup by this manufacturer. Another manufacturer does cans of tuna. That's pretty cool. Okay, so uh, it says here that they looked at their machines and they did a bit of testing and they found out that the mean weight of one of their tuna cans was 93 grams. So uh, in order to do this, I might just rub out a bit there and drop another standard distri uh, standard distri normal distribution sign. Yep. And it says not only was there mean equal to 93 grams, so they're small cans of tuna, but they found that their standard deviation was 1.2 grams. And the question asks, if the tin of tuna must weigh more than 90 grams, otherwise it will be rejected, calculate which tuna cans will be rejected in terms of a z-score. Okay, so we know we have a standard deviation here, so we have mu plus 1 standard deviation, we have mu plus 2 standard deviations, mu plus 3, and we've got it sort of divided up, something like that. I mean, we could do it to scale with a ruler, but I reckon that's reasonably well scaled, yeah, except for that one. But that's okay. You get the idea. So what we need to do now is we need to work out the z-score based on these properties if a can of tuna must weigh more than 90 grams for it to not be rejected. So 90 grams is somewhere on here. If we were to do it across the axis here, we would have a z-score of negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And because it's 93 here, we'd have 93 take 1.2 and such forth, which I'll do up after we've done the z-score. Okay, so as the z-score's up, we can uh, simply go to our calculator and work out the formula. Uh, or should I say, calculate the based on the formula. So we do a similar thing by going alpha 2 to get the fraction bar, and our x value is of course going to be 90, because uh, we want to work out where 90 fits on the normal distribution. And we take mu, which is 93, and that's divided by 1.2, and we find out that it's 2.5. So the z-score 
for uh, 90 grams is negative two and a half. Okay, and then it asks us to specify the intervals for which uh, the tuna can will n avoid being rejected. So if it's going to avoid being rejected, then Z is going to be greater than negative two and a half. So all of these tuna cans will all be safe for sale, which is good. Then it now asks us the range of Z scores where the tuna can is between 90 grams and 95 grams is ideal for the manufacturer. So calculate the range of Z scores where the can is between these two masses. So we've got to look at 90. We know the Z score for 90. It's negative two and a half. So what we can do uh, just here is we can write up the Z score for 95 grams and we calculate it just as we have been doing all throughout the video. So Z score, we go to our calculator. We put in another fraction bar, alpha y equals down to number two, and then we go 95 take 93 divide by 1.2, and we get one and two thirds, or 1.67. So the Z score for 95 grams is 1.67, which is equal to one and two thirds. And hence, if we were to draw this up here, it looks something like that. So between 90 and 95 grams, you're looking at that portion of the distribution. Because again, the z-score essentially tells us our position based on standard deviations of where things are. So you can see a majority of the cans are between 90 and 95 grams. So that's good for the manufacturer. He doesn't say that he's going to reject cans that are greater than 95 grams. But in some cases, some companies might do that. In this case, it just asks us to essentially find the two cans and specify it as a range. So if we were to specify this as a range, like I showed before, uh, we'd be looking at something like this. So the ideal range, not necessarily the range of ones that he won't reject, but the ideal range is negative two and a half, less than z, less than one and two thirds. And that's the ideal range for tuna cans. Cool. Okay, so the last question in this uh, specific one asks us to specify um, which cans would be within the top 16% for tuna mass. So we're looking at the top 16% and we want to find a z-score. So we're looking obviously to this side of the distribution because we're looking for heavy cans and we know that uh, between two and three standard deviations we obviously going to have 2.35%. And then outside of that, we're going to have 0.15%. But uh, between one and two standard deviations, we happen to have 13.5%. Now, if we add them up, we can see, okay, 13.5 plus, and the rest make 2.5. So 13.5 plus 2.5 is 16. So what does this mean? It means that tuna cans that are in the top 16% out of all of those produced will have a z-score of greater than 1. So z is greater than 1. So relative to the ideal range, some of the proportion of what's in the top 16% will actually be ideal. But not all of it, because of course that goes to free standard deviations and beyond. But again, that's how you can use sort of the percentages of a standard distribution to work out the z-score. Most of the time you're going to have to work out this formula because it won't perfectly line up with standard deviation. But that's okay. So now I've worked out what the top 16% of cans have the greatest tuna mass are. So now we just need to finish off by uh, doing a scaled distribution down the bottom. So in order to do this, we'd simply subtract 1.3 from each of them. And because I'm running out of time with this video, I won't actually do it now, but uh, there'll be another video with more questions I'll be uploading where we'll actually compare these two distributions. So uh, I guess I'll see you in part two. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, put them below, but uh, we'll be continuing on next time. See you then.